Hello, I'm Jonathan Lynchak, the Global Vice President of Sales Engineering at Fivetran, and your host for today's Fireside Chat. I'm excited to be joined by Fivetran's co-founder and COO, Taylor Brown, and Chief Product Officer, Anjan Kundavaram, and they'll share their insights today on everything data. They'll talk about the evolving data landscape and the need for modern solutions to security challenges, and even share a little bit about Fivetran's newest innovation, hybrid deployment. Gentlemen. Hey, Jonathan. Tarlin, good to be here. Anjan, what do you think are the most significant challenges facing enterprises today when it comes to data management and integration? You know, as I talk to customers, Jonathan, the, the thing that keeps coming up, what we've heard for a while is like data silos. Like data is in still in spreadsheets, mainframes, databases. The rate at which customers are adopting SaaS applications continues to uh increase. And if you don't kind of bring all that information, like that's a massive disadvantage. And like, if you think about it, like if you're asking a, a business question and you want to kind of get an enriched analytic, it's about context. And the context could be in a spreadsheet. It could be in a database. It could be in an application. And if you don't have the right context, like you're not getting the right answer. The second dimension to this is like customers have sensitive data. It could be customer data. It could be financial data. And if you're not bringing that to make business decisions, like that's going to impact you. That's a disadvantage again. Uh, and you see that all the time. There's a strong correlation between that kind of data and business impact. And then finally, like we've all seen the emergence of Gen AI and LLMs. LL, like it, LLMs can consume this information in a way that analytics couldn't. So if you're a CEO or a data leader, you want a data advantage, like fix the data silo problem. That's great. And Taylor, we know when we read the newspapers every day, we see things about cyber threats. We see new regulations that are being put out. How do you think that is affecting how enterprises deal with these data strategy challenges? Yeah, it's a good question. There's a mountain you know, of challenges that I think customers are facing uh, every single day with their data. And it starts with, you know, there's a, there's a lot more data created than ever before. And then there's all these silos and different applications that customers have across the organization. Then there's a bunch of regulation around uh, GDPR, CCPA. You know, on top of that, you have a global workforce that's you know decentralized. So a lot of people are not in office, uh, and then you have you know a lot of governance challenges over like who has access to what by when, uh, and you know all of these things add up for any company who's trying to do anything with their data. And then you add the additional pressure of AI on top of that. So like. Every company is now facing this need to say, I need the I need to get the most out of my data. I need to have like really great AI strategies. And the existing tool set or the, the previous sort of tool set, it just can't stand up to the challenges. Customers are unable to take their legacy systems and actually uh, you know, modify them appropriately to get the most out of their data. And so they have to find no, you know, more modern approaches for this. How do you ensure that your systems are secure and compliant? while being able to scale for the large amounts of data necessary for AI and ML solutions? The advances that have, uh, that have taken place in technology with the, you know, largely the cloud over the last 10 years has created a whole lot of new opportunity, particularly around the data warehouses and the, the data lakes and data platforms. These are, you know, 100 times better than the existing on-premise systems. And so the first and most important thing is for customers to be getting the data into one of these you know, cloud data platforms. Now, the second challenge is how they're getting data into these different systems has to be scalable. It has to be more automated because you're, you know, a lot of these companies have thousands of different locations across multiple different geos that they need to get data in from. And if they're trying to do this in a manual way, there's just no way they're actually going to be able to keep up and then apply the right governance, apply the right, uh, you know, security, you know, profiling, like all of these other pieces have to get applied at the time that the data is being moved. And so you have to pick tools like Trend that have a very automated approach and a managed approach to this. So also your AI strategy uh, is just a continuation of your data strategy. A lot of companies end up thinking uh, they need to have a data strategy and then they need to have an AI strategy. At the end of the day, AI just runs on top of the data that you have. And so it's a, you know, it's a pitfall for companies to think they need a completely separate strategy. They should have one strategy. And when they do that, they get the best out of their data for their you know, business intelligence. Then they can build AI on, top, AI on top of that. An example of this would be like SACS. We started working with SACS about two years ago. They, we helped them modernize their entire uh, data strategy for business intelligence. And then when the AI wave happened, they started building a lot of AI applications on top of that. And as you may 
may have seen in the last six months, their uh, their growth has been fantastic. And so, you know, I think this is how companies can really leverage their AI strategy and data strategy. Uh, you said something, uh, Taylor, about like customers trying to do this manually. It always seems easy when you do the first connector, but the challenge is when you're trying to make that connector 99.9% .9 uptime, reliable mm -hmm. in the throughput that the customers care. And the thing they often forget is the maintenance. Like data keeps changing. Your business really wants up-to-date information. And so you're like, are you going to keep these data pipelines up and running and uh, updating, or are you going to work on the business problem? So I think this is the this is the issue that you see with customers is like, hey, like go use us for building these data pipelines and go f focus on a business problem. Absolutely. So Anjan, I mean, c considering all those challenges you two both discussed, yeah. what innovations is Fivetran specifically working to address them? Yeah, like one, uh, so we've been working with customers for a long time. And one of the things we've heard consistently is we like the SaaS application. It's so simple to use. I could just get up and running. I don't need to worry about managing. But some customers, certainly with sensitive data, uh, want to keep the data in their network. The data should never leave their network. So we've in innovated with customers and built and launched our hybrid deployment offering. And the way that works is, uh, one, you get the benefits of SaaS and you get the security guarantees of, say, an on-prem solution. And it, it's split into control plane and data plane. So control plane is where your metadata, your configuration, data plane runs on the premises of the customer. That could be on-prem, that could be a VPC, that could be the customer's cloud, it doesn't matter. So as data moves uh, through the data plane, it, it you get the benefits of a sort of both sides. Uh, and we've validated this with financial institutions, with defense uh, uh, institutions. They like the model. They're like, hey, I don't need to go build pipelines to move sensitive data. I can just rely on, on FiveFrance offering. And so the way you do it, you can go into our product, you can download a simple agent, you could install that. You can connect to your local database, and we will manage that for you. And the benefit of that is it runs on your premises. Data never leaves your network. But the Fivetran product team, the engineering team, the support team, they are managing your pipelines. So it's like best of both worlds. So kind of the last frontier, if you will, is if you've had data pipelines that you couldn't move because they're sensitive, Business is like, hey, I need you to move the data. Your regular, your security team is saying, no, you can't. Now we finally have a solution. So we're very excited and uh, we're getting great adoption on that, Jonathan. Taylor, why, how do you think that hybrid is going to change the market and why is it so important for the data movement space? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, like people have to move their data. And so, and as I mentioned, like the challenges with thousands of different data sources, they can't do it manually and they need to have a managed service. Now, a managed service in the, in the past has meant something that's cloud. And obviously, as Anjan mentioned, there's a lot of uh, data sources that customers, you know, uh, need to keep very secure. They need to keep on premise for, you know, whatever reason. Um, and so this is like the best of cloud with the best of on premise put together in a single product. And customers have been asking for this since 2015 ish. But it's a very challenging uh, proposition to be able to do both of these things. And we've spent a lot of time over the last few years building this. And now we're excited to be launching it. Other companies like National Australian Bank uh, uh, is a company that's using hybrid deployment. What for them, they they basically wanted to move faster and they wanted to be on the cutting edge. And so hybrid deployment offers them a, an ability to move all of their data, but in a secure way behind their firewalls, but managed through the fivetran.com. And what they've seen as a result of it is a 30% 30, 30 less uh, cost on ingest and they've seen a much faster uh, you know, speed in terms of replication for their ingest and setup for their ingest. So these are two like examples that I think are really pertinent. Yeah, uh, Taylor, I, I talked to a customer recently, a large bank, and they have 90 separate installs of databases across the globe. <laughs> and, and so like on-prem, they have like so many installs of, yeah. of, of, of replication and they have to manage it. And they're like, their data team is constantly thinking, which update, where do I manage it? Where's the data movement? Where's an outage? And when we told them about hybrid, they're like, oh, Okay, we're going to get on that because yeah. save them so much time to go work on something that actually matters to them. Absolutely. I mean, there's another 
uh, another company working with has 2,500 databases. Yeah, same it's, like, setup, right? it's like more scale. They, 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 each one of these has to have the same type of replication, but it's behind their customers' firewalls. Yeah. And you know this allows them to have a very automated approach towards, hey, we're going to install this instance. We're going to run it all behind your firewall. We're only going to take the data out that needs to be taken out. Yeah. And we're going to do it in a like programmatic way. Because 2,500 databases, yeah. there's no way you can possibly manage that if you're doing one-offs. Yeah. It'll, it'll take you five years just to get going. Yeah, I don't think there's anybody in our industry doing this for data movement. Like, with the with the comprehensive set of data sources and the security guarantees and the simplicity of the the experience that we provide, so I, I think it'll be a, a very good product. Absolutely, and, and then the, the crazy part is like once you actually put customers have the data like within their uh, their cloud data platforms, then they can start to build all these really great AI strategies on top of that. As we're seeing with some of the best uh, AI companies in the world, there are customers, for example, OpenAI. Absolutely. That's a perfect segue to my next question, which really is around AI and ML and the impact that it's making on helping businesses make better decisions. Anjan, what do you feel Fivetran's role is in that transformation? Yeah, it's a question of our times, right? The first thing I want to point out, and I think uh, most of you know this, is LLMs are, are trained on, on the web. Right, like you kind of search engine was built, you go crawl the internet, make a copy of it, you train it for a long time and use lots of GPUs, you get a really good LLM. But those LLMs don't have your company's DNA. They don't have how you build your customer adoption plan. They don't have how you build your product strategy. So that's like a big limitation and like sort of the core value prop of Fivetran is to bring all your data in one place so you, LLMs can consume. And the, the two models through which you're, you're seeing that is, is sort of RAG applications, retrieval, augmented generation, uh, and then sort of fine tuning. Uh, so the bare minimum for a RAG application to work is your, your, your data needs to be in one place and, and, and creating vector embeddings. If you need to be best in class, uh, like to really consume that information, you probably need to go do uh, further transformations because even a, a generic embeddings model uh, isn't going to like really understand uh, what your company DNA is. So you need to do vector transformations or you need to do fine tuning. And for both those strategies, you need coherent data strategy, data in, in one place. The second theme we're seeing as we talk to our customers is, uh, is unstructured data. And, and unstructured data comes in lots of formats. It could be just textual data in like Zendesk tickets or Slack information, or it could be an attachment in a Salesforce. And that's all context that you couldn't really leverage before on analytics. Now with foundation models and LLMs, you really can. So it like it's paramount, like you really think about a holistic data strategy and and get that data uh, in one in one place. Uh, and then finally, we, we've been talking about sort of sensitive data and and how that plays a part. So you, you continue to go uh, move that data. So like we are, are, are like very excited by, by this trend. We think we can help our customers a lot more uh, and, and sort of foundational uh, as to what we're doing. And we're continuing to innovate on these dimensions with our customers. Incredible. Taylor, the other trend we're hearing a lot about that seems to be moving the market is around open data formats. How is Fivetran leading the way in helping customers understand and take advantage of this new innovation? Great question. So a lot of customers uh, want to load data into what is known as a data lake. And the difference between a data lake and a data warehouse is that uh, a data lake is... Uh, somewhere where you, it's a commodity layer, storage layer, where you can just put in unstructured or structured data. And the you know challenge with it has been that there there's not been a, a standard way to organize, secure uh, that data that didn't just turn into a big data swamp. I mean, you just dump everything in and you spend a lot of time sort of, uh, you know, trying to make sense of that data. And, you know, in the last few years, these open file formats like Delta or Iceberg have come onto the market which uh, are ACID compliant, which effectively they are, uh, they take the sort of best organizational pieces of a data warehouse, but they make it available within a commodity, you know, storage layer like S3. This is really the holy grail for customers because ultimately what they want to do is uh, they want to just move all their data into one location. They want it to be like cheap. They want to have ownership over that. They don't want to get locked into a single platform and um, they want to be able to, to use that in a lot of different places for AI, for ML, and you know, there's a whole plethora of different things that, that customers want to do with that data for building it, putting it back into like applications. And so what Fivetran has built is in uh, a loader for uh, what we call our, our Fivetran data lake service for loading data into Iceberg or Delta automatically 
Uh, we do all the work to uh, transform that data and to update it within the warehouse, which is a fair amount of work. Um, and you know the the sort of benefits that our customers see from this, besides being more future proofed, is that they have a lot of cost savings on the ingestion side. So when you when, when customers are loading into uh, a cloud data warehouse um, or even a database, you know part of the the cost that they're incurring there is just actually loading that data. And what we've found is about, it's you know very it's quite high. It's about 35%, it could be upwards of 50% for some use cases where you're just spending 50% of your overall data warehouse bill in moving data into it. And so with FiveFan, that ingestion is now free. Uh, and then they can query that data directly from whatever cloud data warehouse like Snowflake or Databricks or Starburst or whatever else that they wanna use. This is a massive game changer. And I really think the whole industry is going to move towards this architecture over the next few years. Yeah, I think this is a very exciting development. Uh, the whole ecosystem is, is, is sort of pushing us to be more, more open. And mm -hmm. the customers are trying to value engineer, like get more return on their analytics dollars. And like the, the open data, uh, data formats and the lake house architecture and the data lake architecture is letting us do that, right? Like make one data format, one independent storage layer, and you can go use any number of query engines. Uh, that's choice. Uh, you talked about cost savings. They can go do more things with that. So that's exciting. And then really exciting to also see like Snowflake and Databricks drive and push for this, totally. uh, uh, this open format innovation, they're pushing the, the catalogs with, with Polaris and, and Unity. So uh, I think the entire industry is, is, is pushing and it's going to drive uh, a lot of value to customers. And, and, and we, Fivetran, are going to play a huge role because we're going to enable this shift, this paradigm shift where customers can try out new engines and, and, and kind of do their analytics uh, in, a, in a very cost-effective manner. What is something else that excites you about where the market is going and what predictions do you have for the next year? Open data lakes, I, I think that's going to be very pervasive. Uh, most customers are going to leverage that. Uh, we're going to see an explosion of query engines likely. Uh, and if you're a customer that only need, that often scans data of a gig, you might want to pick a query engine that's like purpose built for that. You may see new innovation uh, in in the type of query engines that that run on on iceberg or, or, or delta, so that's going to be a very exciting uh, time for for us. Taylor, Hi, there's there's sort of two things I would say. The first one is definitely I think the whole industry is moving towards data lakes, and that will be the future. It sort of feels like 2012 for data warehouses, uh, and we're just going to see a whole lot more investment from companies, from you know partners, from the ecosystem to support data lakes and building around data lakes. And ultimately, that's the best for the customer in the, in the short term and the long term. The other thing that, you know, in thinking about what role AI plays in the, the world today and in the future, you know, I've been thinking Fivetran's uh, um, mission is to make access to data as simple and reliable as electricity. And if, you know, that, that analogy is really from, you know, when Thomas Edison brought electricity into the house for the light bulb. And so if we think about that analogy as, BI or business intelligence is really the light bulb, I would say the hairdryer and all the other thousands of things that were built because the access to electricity in the house was so easy is really what's going to happen with AI. So we're, we're already seeing a lot of innovation that's happening now because the access is there where companies can now build all kinds of different things downstream of this really you know, easy access to all this really critical information that they have that's all internal information. It's not just like public information. Um, and so I'm excited just to see what happens, right? Like Thomas Edison didn't know that the hairdryer, the washing machine, you know, or the electric shaver was like going to come out, right? But that all happened as a result of the hard work that he put in. And I think that's the work that Fivetran is doing for companies today. What a, what a great analogy. I love that. So once again, thank you both for joining today. What an exciting time to be in the data space. I want to thank everyone for watching today. And if you'd like more information on anything you've learned, please feel free to go to fivetran.com. Thank you so much.